Do you like it, Nana? Another golden rose. How original. I eat from plates stamped with roses. I sleep in sheets embroidered with roses. I have a golden rose painted on my chamber pot. As if that makes it smell any better. Roses are boring, dear. The Tyrell sigil is a gold rose on a green field. Beautiful roses on the outside, the Tyrells hide thorns if anyone tries to cross them. As wardens of the south, the Tyrells hold their title from their seat at a high garden in the Reach, the most fertile land in Westeros. The Reach keeps the people fed, supplying less fruitful areas like King's Landing with grain, fruit, wine, and livestock. It's one of the richest lands in Westeros, second only to the Lannisters' Westerlands. I have an outrageous amount of money. Not as much as the Lannisters, but a lot more than you. So for the Tyrells, tending the green field really does grow into a rose made of gold. While the other houses are hated by commoners, the Westerosi people love the Tyrells because of their seemingly good nature. Marjorie Tyrell is pretty much the only ruler we've seen in King's Landing who even takes a moment to pretend to care about the peasants. But behind their charitable and poised outer temperament, like the thorny rose, the Tyrells are cunning and ruthless. And like a flower bending with the wind and to the sun, the Tyrells are nothing if not flexible, taking advantage of every opportunity, making the best of every situation. We might see the Tyrells as a cross between the Starks and the Lannisters. Like the Starks, they love each other and project a noble code of honor, though in the Tyrell's case, this code is a superficial facade. Like the Lannisters, they lead an inner life that's a very different story from the outer, and they're not to be messed with. Beware, after this point, this video contains spoilers. While there may be a few minor cousins remaining, most of the key Tyrells, Marjorie, Loras, and Mace, were wiped out by Cersei's wildfire at the end of season six. Cersei stole the future from me. Survival is not what I'm after now. Unless some of these minor Tyrell relations are still alive and come into play, Lady Olenna's death marks the extinction of another major house in Game of Thrones. Overall, House Tyrell represents fertility and prosperity, outer benevolence, pragmatic opportunism, flexible cunning, hidden strength, matriarchy, and family solidarity. Growing strong. The dullest words of any house. The Tyrell motto, Growing Strong, speaks to their place in the Reach, an area with a booming population and fertile land. The word growing makes us think of a closeness to nature, and strong reminds us their wealth is based not on currency and politics, but on a firm foundation of resources from the land. Their knowledge of agriculture is reflected in their patient and plodding nature, both of which are necessary to reap the rewards of what you sow, whether agriculturally or politically. Planting a seed means it'll take a while, but it will eventually bear fruit. Moreover, they have a very long view of the game. Growing strong also means the Tyrells have a strong familial bond at the center of their house. They're a loving and tight-knit family, with nothing like the Lannister or Baratheon internal rivalries. The members of House Tyrell genuinely love, accept, and support one another, something that's almost revolutionary in the world of Game of Thrones. Luckily for us Tyrells, our blood runs quite warm. This difference may have something to do with the fact that the family is really run by the women, and it has been for centuries. Do you know my son? The Lord of High Garden? I haven't had the pleasure. Mm. No great pleasure, believe me. Ponderous oaf. Show creator D.B. Weiss maintains that House Tyrell is an unofficial matriarchy. They're basically a secret matriarchy. I mean, the Tyrells are a family where the men tend to be handsome dopes, and, uh, and the women are really the brains behind the operation. Lord Tyrell, be a good man. Fetch my quill and paper. And Olena's advice to Daenerys is to never listen to a man. I've known a great many clever men. I've outlived them all. You know why? I ignored them. Tyrell women demonstrate three secrets of growth. Pragmatism, adaptability, and acceptance. Yes, all Lannisters are lions. And when a Tyrell farts, it smells like a rose. Opportunists through and through, they're prone to picking the side that's likely to win. The Tyrells began not as rulers, but as stewards to the Gardener Kings in the Reach. They first rose to power by voluntarily surrendering Highgarden to Aegon Targaryen, after Aegon burned the Gardener King and his heirs alive in battle. Aegon made the Tyrells Lord Paramount of the Reach, passing over other families who ranked above them. For this reason, the Tyrells are always wary that other houses in the Reach might not respect their rule, especially House Florent, who claims more direct lineage from the Gardener Kings. I've known Olenna since I was a child. She was a great woman once. Now she's broken. 
In Robert's rebellion, the Tyrells supported the likely victors, the Targaryens, but surrendered once they realized Robert would win. In the present timeline, the Tyrells align first with Renly Baratheon, then with the dominant Lannisters, marrying Marjorie off to Joffrey to become queen. But they soon plot to put Tommen on the throne, as he'll be easier to control. Marjorie impressively manages to navigate marriages to Renly, Joffrey, and Tommen, adapting to each with grace and manipulating the three very different men to her own purposes. This speaks to her exceptional skill at accepting the reality that's given to her, which she seems to inherit from her grandmother. But once the cow's been milked, there's no squirting the cream back up her udder, so here we are to see things through. Olena and Marjorie don't hesitate to accept that Marjorie's brother Loris is gay. They simply That's work with it. A sword swallower through and through. But it's a natural thing, do boys having a go at each other beneath the sheets? This is a notable contrast to someone like Tywin Lannister, who won't face his children's incest even after Cersei rubs it in his face. Everything they say is true about Jamie and me. No. no. Your legacy is a lie. No. I don't believe you. Unlike fire and blood or hear me roar, the motto growing strong isn't boastful or threatening. The Tyrells aren't making a big performance of might and power. They take advantage of being underestimated. No one would suspect Lady Olena of killing King Joffrey. Like the roots of a flower, the extent of her influence is often unseen. Yet the strong in growing strong is equally accurate. The Tyrells are not the innocent flower or pacifist farmers, but a force to be reckoned with. Do you want to be a queen? No. I want to be the queen. Olena's words to Daenerys speak to her own strength as well. You're a dragon. Be a dragon. The Tyrell gold and green encapsulate the source of their power. Gold is the color of wealth, and green is the color of nature. The Reach's natural plentitude provides food for the Seven Kingdoms, which means gold for the Tyrells. When House Tyrell stops sending our crops to the capital, Everyone here will starve, and I make sure the hungry know who's to blame. Like the Lannisters who also use the color gold, the Tyrells like to rule and are cunning in court politics, but they're even more subtle than the Lannisters, who tend to need more validation and public shows of vengeance. Green is harmonious, nurturing, a symbol of spring, freshness, and life itself. It's seen as a stable color, just like the Tyrell women, but it also has negative connotations of selfishness and greed or envy. Marjorie and Olena Tyrell are incredibly manipulative and unwavering in pursuing their self-interest. The representations of the sigil vary the intensity of the green. Pale versions suggest that they're sometimes trying to underplay their greedy nature in favor of a generous, kind reputation. In the beginning, the Tyrells mute the colors of their garments, sporting an understated teal in place of a true green. However, by Oathkeeper, the episode in which Olena admits that she played a part in Joffrey's murder, the Tyrells start showing off their true colors. And once Tommen becomes king, Marjorie is seen more often in bright regal gold, asserting her place as royalty. One of the few houses without an animal the Tyrell boasts a rose on their sigil, symbolizing the source of their power in the growth of Highgarden. The national flower of England, the rose makes us think of the real-life Tudor Batch. After the War of the Roses, the history that loosely inspires Game of Thrones, the reigning Tudors combined the red and white rose symbols that the houses of Lancaster and York were believed to have used. While animals fight one another, roses grow strong in their gardens without openly clashing, only competing for the light. It's significant that the female-led house is embodied by a non-violent symbol that avoids confrontation in favor of more productive moves. Roses are a symbol of beauty and femininity, which not only embodies the Tyrell's matriarchy, but also makes us think of the way they play on people's perception of the feminine to appear weaker and less significant than they are. Olena and Marjorie play up their passive and docile facade, Marjorie in her charitable image, and Olena letting others dismiss her as antiquated and peripheral. But both understand that a captivating, love-inspiring rose beauty only gets them so far in this ruthless game. Of course, I can't remember a queen who was better loved and my granddaughter. The common people loved her. The nobles loved her. What is left of her now? Ashes. The Tyrell allure and kind demeanor is matched by their sharp, protective thorns. Olena is known as the Queen of Thorns, thanks to her sharp wit. We both know you're not writing anything. Ah, yes, the famously tart-tongued Queen of Thorns. And the famous tart. Queen Cersei. But the moniker also speaks to the grandmother's talent for self-preservation and family protection. The Tyrells are driven by protecting their own, ruthless in defending their loved ones from danger. Olena isn't going to let Marjorie stay married to so unstable and violent a king as Joffrey. You don't think I'd let you marry that beast, do you? 
Marjorie is driven by the mission to free her brother. And while Cersei did outsmart her, Marjorie's self-preserving intelligence showed in that she was the only one to foresee what was about to happen in the Sept. The fact that the Tyrells are killed by green fire has an ironic symbolism. It's not only their own color, green, but it's also an uncontrollable wild force on the opposite end of the nature spectrum from their philosophy of carefully cultivating stable growth. In the books, the Tyrells have more siblings and minor cousins, and in the show, some of the handmaidens we've seen are implied to be Tyrell relations, so it's possible there are still some remaining Tyrells to continue the bloodline. Either way, House Tyrell has provided some of the most clever and cunning players in the game, and taught us some interesting lessons about how to grow strong. It was horrible enough for me. A shocking scene. Not at all what I intended.